Good evening. Welcome, everyone. I'm Diana Ingram. I'm the executive director at Hill Center at the Old Naval Hospital. And it is such a thrill to welcome you to the capstone event of our first inaugural Benjamin Drummond Emancipation Day celebration. I can't think of a better way to finish what has been an extraordinary four days of looking at the Civil War through the lens of the African American experience. We've looked at it through food, we've looked at it through, uh, well, we'll look at it through music, we've looked at it through poetry, just a, just a really amazing uh, set of uh, gatherings. If you missed any of these conversations, they will be on our YouTube channel, so. And if you didn't come to any of them, put it in your diaries for next year. So, welcome to uh, the final presentation, African American Music from the Civil War Era, performed by the Washington Performing Arts Men and Women of the Gospel Choir. For more than 20 years, the Washington Performing Arts Men and Women of the Gospel Choir have celebrated the traditions of gospel music and its related genres with dynamic, vibrant performances in venues across the nation's capital, the Kennedy Center, the Smithsonian, the White House, the National Cathedral, Christ Church. It's, it's an honor to have them. Under the direction of artistic director Stanley J. Thurston, the choir is dedicated to cultivating and showcasing the talents of its members while presenting this American art form at its highest artistic level in distinctive performances. They were named the recipient of the 2014 Choral Excellence Award for Outstanding Gospel Choir by the Corrales Foundation. The men and women of the Gospel Choir perform contemporary and classic works of African American heritage including gospel standards, hymns, anthems, and other choral repertoire. And this evening, they will t take a look at African-American music from the Civil War era. Uh, they have performed with the who's who of, of musical performance. Uh, Wynton Marsalis, the Winans Brothers, Jesse Norman, um, gosh, who else? Uh, the Ramsey Lewis Trio, Sweet Honey and the Rock, uh, amazing. So, it's now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Harry Jones, who is the Assistant Director and Curator at the African American Civil War Memorial Museum, who will introduce this evening's program. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Good evening. In the pages of the North Star, in 19, correction, in 1849, Dr. Martin Delaney wrote that those who believe that the time will come in God's providence when they can stand up and strike a blow for liberty are delivered from the, in, from the portals of infamy to their true character, elevated freemen. Delaney said that those who were the elevated freemen, those who believed that the day would come when they could strike a blow for liberty, they believed not that the scriptures taught their obedience, for, in, in, obedience to their masters, but that the scriptures taught their obedience to their God. And they flipped the scriptures. He referred to this as gospel talk, flipping the scriptures, making the scriptures work for us, said Delaney, and our liberation. This is in a tradition of Prince Hall, Absalom Jones, Jupiter Hammond, Mariah Stewart, Richard Allen, and we can go on. For there were many who were a part of this organization of true believers who believed that the day would come when indeed they could rise and strike a blow for liberty. And that day did come. And over the last four days, we have been celebrating emancipation. We've been celebrating, commemorating the liberation of all those who were enslaved. It is important to note that not everyone was a true believer, so not everyone knew the codes. Not everyone knew gospel talk. But they had banded themselves together to further the cause of freedom, said Alan Pinkerton, the head of Union Intelligence of the first 18 months of the war. Those who had banded themselves together to further the cause of freedom were members of a secret society that Pinkerton referred to as the Loyal League. He also referred to it as Lincoln's Legal Loyal League, or the Four L's. 
This secret society spoke in gospel talk. And tonight, you will hear songs that speak to their experience, to their code, for there are secrets in the songs. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for by the sword and carried away in ships. We were required to sing the Lord's song in a strange land, laboring in mines and fields. We produced wealth for another man. Praying to a living God, we gave the world our progeny, believing that their birthright was liberty. God answers prayers, elders such as Absalom Jones said repeatedly, in faith, we will appropriate our birthright and find our way home, free from taskmasters, requiring us to labor as the possessions of another man. A great day is coming, a day of jubilee, the faithful said repeatedly. And we prayed for the day of jubilee, believing that God had gifted us liberty.
God answers prayers. And there is trouble in this land where liberty subordination to tyranny is institutionalized by slavery. Believing liberty to be a gift from God, Thomas Jefferson feared the awakening of God's justice. Indeed, I tremble for my country, wrote he, when I reflect that God is just, his justice shall not sleep forever, laboring in the great houses, for our great houses, our pharaohs, we believe in a just God. God's going to trouble the water. Stand still and see the salvation, wrote Martin Delaney two years before troubled water turned to blood. When brother brought sword against brother in April 1861, believers knew the day of reckoning had come and redemption was near. Jefferson had reason to fear. All the troubled water had turned to blood. God's not gonna trouble Men all dressed in red. God's 
gonna trouble the water. It looks like the bend that Moses made. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water.
Frederick Douglass wrote in, in August 1861, we have very good evidence to the fact that Abraham Lincoln's administration, notwithstanding appearances, stands ready to enforce a policy abolishing slavery in rebellious states. Congress soon gave Lincoln authority to abolish slavery in the District of Columbia with the stroke of his pen. On April 16, 1862, in troubled water turned to blood, our journey home had begun. God had dispatched his chariots. On the eve of the day of Jubilee, Douglas admonished us that we must put down the rebellion in order for the Emancipation Proclamation to set our people free. Thus was the charge on January 1, 1863, the day of Jubilee. Living in God's providence, we found evidence to the fact as we rode on chariots of freedom, willing to accept the grave before living again as slaves. An army of true believers, a gospel army, boarded that old ship of Zion and mustered for the Union cause. And gospel soldiers had no reason to pause. Tis
captain called our names from the muster rolls, and true believers answered. Thousands marched on to the battlefields. We fought in the gospel army to suppress the rebellion. We fought in the gospel army to preserve the union. We fought in the gospel army to maintain the supremacy of the Constitution. We fought in the gospel army to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. Throughout the land of our captivity, in the shadow of great houses spared, and amongst the ashes of those not passed over, we marched on toward our birthright through the parting of a Red Sea of blood. In Washington, before the war was won, our march had begun. And before God's work was done, the Gospel Army had marched from Richmond to Austin, enforcing the Emancipation 
proclamation, thus setting our people free. Marching in faith and in league with the Constitution, we saved the Union and secured our birthright, liberty. And with the 13th Amendment to that Constitution, all were called to board freedom's train. Get on board, little children, get on board. have come out of Egypt and Ethiopia stretches forth her hands unto God. Praise to the living God who sent his only begotten son to secure our way home. With blood, the sin of slavery was purged. And in our walk with Jesus, we keep secure our birthright, liberty. Declaring our God a mighty God, we marched on victoriously. Declaring our God a mighty God, we put down the rebellion. Like Moses, we went down to all the great houses commanding our pharaohs to set our people free. My God is a mighty God. My God is a great God. My God is an awesome God. Bless his name, hallelujah. My God is a mighty God. My God is a great God. My God is an awesome God. Bless his name, hallelujah. My God is a mighty God. My God is a great God. My God is an awesome God. Bless his name, hallelujah. My God is a mighty God.
My God is a great God. My God is an awesome God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. My God is a mighty God. My God is a great God. My God is an awesome God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. My God is a mighty God. My God is a great God. Art Society. We'd like to thank the Hill Center and all of you that have come out to support us. Thank you very much. We, uh, we're very excited about the opportunity and we hope that we've lifted your spirits for the evening and culminated what was a very enriching experience uh, through your four-day seminar. Thank you very much for your attention and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.